Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome. Really glad you're here. I wanted to introduce Tanya Roberts, who is with the Watercolor Society of Indiana. Um, they are based in Fishers, but it is for all of Indiana. So I encourage you, if you are a watercolor artist, to get involved. And Tanya is here to share some information and introduce our artist. <laughs> Okay, hello everyone. Um, so again, I'm Tanya Roberts, the Executive Director of the Watercolor Society of Indiana. So before I get started, I'd like to know who I'm speaking to tonight. So my first question is, how many of you were in the Watercolor Society show at the Allen County Public Library one year ago? Raise your hand. Okay, very good, thank you. It was one of our regional exhibits, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in a minute. Um, so how many of you in this room are were a member of the Watercolor Society in the year 2023? Perfect. Now this question, I want honesty, <clears throat> and it's okay if you raise your hand, but how many of you have never heard of the Watercolor Society of Indiana before we came here today? Okay, well that is part of my job, is to uh, spread our um, society around the entire state, because we actually serve all watercolor artists in Indiana. And again, we are based out of central Indiana, and in the past we've been very active in central Indiana, but I've been on board going into my fourth year, and that has been my mission to become um, inclusive with the entire state and all levels of artists, not just our professional watercolor artists. Um, so we have lots of benefits for being a member. Um, Larry has, Fence is one of our signature members, and so as a benefit, we invited him to come to paint with you today. <laughs> uh, when they asked me for a watercolor artist to do a demo, um, I recommended him. So another benefit is we have our regional exhibits, one's coming up in Brown County, so we're trying to travel all over the state, and our huge membership show in Indianapolis is going to be in a gallery downtown Indy called Gallery 42, and it is open to every member, every level, of ability, um, every member of um, Indiana. We do actually accept former residents as well, but it is a wonderful opportunity to get your art in downtown gallery. Um, and that is coming up, that's on our website, so stay tuned. And we also have a jury exhibit, where last year we gave away $9,000 cash awards to 10 people, the top 10, um, and so the jury exhibit is also only open to members. So we have a lot of benefits for being a member. Um, and basically today, I just wanted to introduce you, myself to you, our society to you. I'm not gonna go on a huge sales pitch. Um, I want you to enjoy Larry's artwork and his painting. Um, I did bring some postcards and some um, forms if you wanted to sign up. And our membership is on a calendar year. So the sooner you sign up, the more benefits you get. And I did actually, we. I brought something that, for those of you that were members last year, raise your hand again. And so how many of you were not able to get one of the calendars from the jury exhibit? Okay, well, I have one for you today. <clears throat> one of our um, things we added last year was, this is our jury exhibit. It gives you a great idea of um, some of the magnificent watercolor talent in this state. Um, and in the past, we only got calendars for the people who were in the exhibit, which is 45, the top 45 from a juror. But this past year, we ordered one for every single member. Um, so I'm gonna give that to you today. So before I introduce our artist, what, does anybody have any questions about the Watercolor Society? I can tell you it's only $45, and that is for the, um, the remainder of the year. It's not prorated, so again, the sooner you join, the better. We have all kinds of newsletters, our workshops. We um, have regional workshops, one's coming up in Valparaiso. Uh, we have two international artists coming in to Indy, three-day and four-day workshops. And every time we do a workshop, or every time we do um, events or meetings, we always try to do a free demo. And when I say free, it's free for members. So we sell admission tickets of $10 per person to come to a demo, but it's free for members. So that's another thing we try to do is to share um, that with 
our uh, all levels of membership. So the other thing is we've really grown our social media. So I encourage you to get on our Instagram page. It's free. Our YouTube page has some demos on there um, that gives you an idea of our exhibits. Um, and our website is just full of information, which is actually interactive. It's a membership website, so you can talk to other members and learn about other members and actually promote your own artwork and website and things through our website as well, which is watercolorsocietyofindiana.org, which is also on the postcard I gave you. So I'm going to come around and pass out these uh, catalogs to those of you that were members last year. Um, and Larry Fence is a signature member of the Watercolor Society, and in order to get signature status, you are juried into a juried show twice. So it's actually an honor. It's, a, it's an honor to be in the juried show. Um, it's very competitive, and it's an honor to be in it at least twice to become mm -hmm. a signature member. So congratulations on that. And um, I'm going to turn that over to Larry. I think we're going to dim. The lights are already dimmed, so you can see it a little bit on the screens. Um, and, you know, I think you guys are probably very laid back and we are very laid back as well. So if any of you feel mm -hmm. that you want to come up and look closer, feel free to. I'll let Larry talk a little bit more about his technique and his artwork following his demo as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for um, inviting me, by the way, Tanya. And I've not met Susan and Sue. Okay. So I did. Okay. Um, got, I got lost coming up here in the fog, so um, didn't know where I was going, so she walked me through it once I got into uh, town here. So anyway, just a little bit um, about myself. I've been painting uh, watercolor for over 40 years, but during that time I was just getting started uh, like everyone does, and I took, I'm still taking workshops. I took workshops from um, several different uh, people here in Indiana, and um, uh, there's a famous uh, watercolorist here in Indiana called uh, named Luke Buck, and he's fabulous. So um, back in the 70s, I was driving from the east side of Indianapolis down to uh, Beach Grove, where he, was, he and his wife were living at that time, and I drove there uh, every week for two years and took classes from him. Phenomenal guy. And he's still, so I met up with him again recently and um, met some other people, took some other workshops and just love that. That just helps me keep motivated and um, keep myself in, in the training mode and learning mode. I, I don't think I'll ever learn enough about it to, to stop, you know, so. Um, so periodically, um, I was not painting full time for very long. It was just kind of hit and miss. Get a job and, and get whatever, you know, will pay the bills and, and pay my expenses on paper and paint. And, um, and then I um, got a job in uh, Muncie, moved from Indianapolis to Muncie back in the late uh, or mid 80s uh, to work on the uh, Garfield comic strip. And um, that was uh, that was uh, pretty co pretty cool, and and to have 33 years at any one place as an artist is is unheard of, and with a high school education is even more unheard of. <laughs> so um, I've been blessed, and it was so when I retired uh, about six years ago, um, I just started doing this full time. That's all I talked about. Like I was going to, what are you going to do when you retire? And if I can tell anybody something to do or not do is don't put your passion on a back burner too long. Continue doing it no matter what job you're doing or no matter where you are or no matter what type of artwork you're doing, just continue, continue learning. So um, I will need some water for my containers here. And I forgot to clean my palette before. Um, half or a quarter. Let's start with it. Let's start with a little bit more than that per. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I'll need some. Yeah, I'll need to change it out. I'm a dirty painter. No, you got to keep your brush clean. So one of them is for clean water, and one's to hopefully to rinse and, and keep your brushes clean. So when you're mixing paints, 
and they're going to get dirty. Um, you know, your paint wells get get dirty, and you just let it go. They can be cleaned out. So I better uh, moisten these too while I'm thinking about it. How many watercolor artists are here, or or, or would like to try it? A few, okay. It kind of helps to know who you're sharing information with, the stuff that I take for granted. So if you have any questions during, throughout, or why do you do this? I'm a studio painter by choice, where I can work at home and I can walk away from a piece and let it dry and come back and think. I think watercolors, the most difficult thing about it is you, they're hard to go back and change things. Um, you got to paint and save your white paper because that, at the point of interest, is always a benefit. I don't use um, I don't use opaque paint. Um, I don't have I'm not opposed to it. I just never done it. I try and save and and do it as close to transparent as I can. Um, Do you always start with a clean palette? Yes. Although I brought some of my tints, I was practicing this piece the other day, and um, I think it's laying over there, and I may go get it. Um, but it's, this is the one we're work, I'm working on today. But I did a couple of practice pieces, and I thought, oh man, I was, of course my studio is a total wreck, and and I had a I had one this size. This is a quarter sheet. The watercolor paper, and um, so that's what I'm working. Look what I did already. They'll be clean. Anyway, I was telling you about studio, uh, and I have lights. I have plenty of lights in there, so I'm do my best on this. That's showing up better there than what I'm seeing here. So, uh, yes, I do do start with a clean. Palette, and uh, what I like about watercolors are you can you can fill your wells full of paint, and uh, I was told the the pigments are much better than they were ten twenty years ago ones I used to use, they would dry and crack and fall out of the pot palette. They were hard to re-wet. These, I don't know what they're making, how they're making them, but I love them because you can fill each um, section with, with one color, and I fill it to the top. Let it, It'll self-level almost, and then I was told to set it out in the sun and let it dry completely, and um, they don't crack. And so then when you're ready to paint, you just squirt, you know, go around and wet, wet them, and they're ready to go. So the only paint you're wasting is, is what you're mopping up to mix your next colors, not like, you know, and but when this is all said and done, I can dob each well and put the tray back on and, and off, you, off you go. But let me, uh, let me get started here. Um, I do have the drawing already done, like I said, I've... I did a couple of of these just to uh, practice. This was the one over here framed. It was um, probably a, a year or two ago, and I was trying to pick one I could do in an hour, and I thought, I don't know. I'm so used to walking away and taking a break that I can't do that here. So, yeah, you're welcome to come up and look at that. I may even, I've got this set up um, to do my stages. So I, I take photographs periodically um, there I, for, and, and I'll do a small, a short slideshow sometimes. And I'll take periodic, uh, like five or six, um, one of each stage, uh, the first uh, set of values or washes, and then a little bit darker. Now it's actually pretty much done. So that gives the 
then I'll do a small slideshow with some music and post those on Facebook and people like to see that how they're done so I'm going to start out the first thing you know it's easy to forget but have to it's best to uh, mix up your paints ahead of time. Am I in my own? You're not watching me. Can you not see that? Can I move this over? I can move some of these brushes. Shoot, over here. I got way too much stuff anyway. Can you see any of the... I'm still in the way. Oh, this is the camera. No wonder. I yeah, thought this was the camera. Oh, let me move the other way then. Well, you tell me where to stand then. Was I good before? No. That's better now? So this is... This is that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start up here on the sky, and it's going to be fairly light, and I don't know that I want, I know one other thing I wanted to tell you. If you have mistakes, like I do quite often, don't throw this away. Um, how that used to go together. Don't, don't, don't throw it away. Cut it up into sections. I'm going to cut this even smaller, I think. Um, and then I use the backside for testing. Anytime you're painting with watercolor, you, you're always, how wet your brush, how wet is the paper, when are you going to do what, when, and there it goes from a wet to a dry brush. And this is kind of a nice uh, technique to do if you want sparkle on a lake or a body of water. Um, so that's... Um, because the, the only texture you can get with watercolor is either the texture of the paper or what you're able to do with, with the brush. So if I go sideways, and this is 140, this is 140 pound cold press. So it goes hot press, which is smooth, cold press, medium, tooth, and then rough. And then you can go up to the, the different papers. As a matter of fact, I'll pass that around these two. This is 140 pound and this is 300. And you can tell this is almost like a board. So this is not going to warp on you once you get it saturated with water. This one can, but if I'm quick enough, I can get the paint down before it warps. It's hard to get an even wash when you've got a buckle going. So that'll show you what the paper's like. But the rough hat, I, I like it as well because you can really get loose with it and you get a lot of texture with a, a side, you know, a side stroke. Let me see. I'm gonna mix a little violet in that. Not much though. Are you your paper no, I don't. I never did like doing that and, and, um, the more I talked to other artists, they didn't either, and they said, you don't really have to. They're sized. Um, now, if they do buckle, supposedly if you stretch them and get them wet once, they won't buckle again. But I usually just tape mine down. Once it dries, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry flat. And I've never, um, I've tried staples before, and it, it just really tears up your board and it's not easy to do, so I just tape tape it down, and then I burnish, burnish the edge so I don't get any bleed, but that's not critical either, really, if you're going to frame it, so. Okay. I should have used this one for...
Am I in my own light again? I'm just going to start here and wet the paper. If you if you plan on, I don't I don't even like I've tried I've seen artists um, wet the paper once, and watch for it to start to dry, and then they'll wet it again just to make sure it's totally saturated. Um, I don't think you have to do that. We'll try and stay out of the camera, but. Will come down. So and I'm so I'm not going to wet the whole thing. I I prefer doing it in sections because um, I'm not that I'm not that quick. I don't think that quick. <laughs> and so the uh, no, I'm going to not mess with that. I'm just going to do this. That's what I need. So I'm just going to loosely, the sky is not really that important. I'm just going to go in and loosely um, put some interesting shapes in here. Now, you always, um, it's always a good idea to um, put a little more pigment in there than you want because as watercolors dry back, you know that they will lighten up and um, so that, that'll lighten up pretty good, but I don't want it that, I don't want it just a flat. So before it dries, I don't want too much, I don't want to add any more water, but I'll just put a couple of darker. What color? I'm using, <clears throat> I've, I tell you what, I've used several different, to fill these up it'll get low, and if I don't have the right one, I'll add another blue to it, but, but this is a primary, uh, primary blue um, for uh, it's not cobalt, um, but I, I used to use a uh, my Mary blue pigments. They were hard to get, and um, I started. Uh, I switched over to um, whole bean. They're they're a good quality paint too. I didn't ask answer your question though. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep the I don't know if you can see me, keep the edge clear because if this water if this paper starts to dry and water seeps in from the side you get a bloom or blossom. Sometimes you can make them work to your advantage. Um, I'm liking this effect right here to where you get your wet on wet. That really, truly tells me it's a watercolor painting. Um, I've seen a lot of people, fantastic artwork that's almost photo real, but you're not sure what medium they're using. So I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. Because the next thing I'm going to do is come down on this first ridge here, and it's going to be a um, probably similar color, but I'm going to try and gray it down a little bit so that it's different from the sky color. But I want a little bit more of a hard edge on it. So as the shine goes off, 
you look at it from an angle and you can tell the water starts to dry and the shine goes away from the paper, but it's still saturated. It's still full of water, but it will bleed less. So I'll load my brush up a little differently. I'm, uh, the colors I was using was a primary blue, permanent violet, and a Payne's gray just to take it down a notch to go uh, so it's not uh, such an intense, you know, primary color. Okay. Yeah, it's you, there's many different ways. You can just have a lot of paper towel there, or some people use a wet sponge to to dab your brush into and take some of the water out of it, um, and to clean your brush. Um, this is just a uh, roll of toilet paper, and I wrap a paper towel around it with a rubber band, and I change the paper towel off. So it's, it basically will soak up water, or pigment, or anything if I'm trying to dry out my brush or clean out my brush. So if I go to the water here and I get something I, I like, and I think this is too wet and there's too much water, if there's, I don't want to go onto a wet paper with too much water or it's just going to be a disaster. So I'll take it and touch the heel to no, no, this, I mean, this is critical enough that it makes me nervous. Trying to get it just right, because as you can see here, I don't know if you can see that one. Um, I just about didn't, didn't make it. It was starting to bleed too, mm -hmm. you know, too much, that violet going up in there. So... Yeah, I do, and that's right here, hanging right here by my side, but right now it's over there. And uh, if I need to dry this completely, which I will here shortly, um, I will take it over there and dry it and give you guys a break. What time did we start? <laughs> Ten minutes ago. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, hang on, folks. Here it goes. It's a little bit darker, but I'm hoping I can get. And I'm gonna try and. If I get a little dry brush, that's fine. You can't see it, can you? I've got to do this anyway. So that's all I want there. I'm going to pull this down with water. I may have to go up into that a little bit more, but you see I like that little bit of dry brush and this fades back into the sky a little bit. Don't get my sketches wet. Just a bit. Okay, I'm going to take some of this up here. I'm gonna let that go for now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be. Okay, so I'm going to I'm coming all the way down to this line with my violet for the next mountain. So I'm 
Let me see if I can work it in here without. So I want this wet as well. Put it all the way down. Yep, graphite pencil pencil. Oh, this this pencil. Yes. Yes. Well, I had I had this to work from, so you know, and and, and another one over there. So I did it once. I did it once, then I did a, a freehand. I I've tried. Um, I tell you what, I've got something on here that's. And I'm painting around this edge of the barn. This brush is getting way too old. It's not. I've learned that if you buy a new brush, you should throw an old one away. But sometimes those old ones do some, do just the right thing if you're working on a tree or a leaf or. So I'm going to add some violet to this same mix. Okay, and what's opposite of violet on the palette? Ochre, yellow. We'll put some over here to the side and see what that does. Rather, rather than, rather than that, I like that a little bit better. I I do. I guess I started with those, and it's whatever you get. Uh, but I did take some workshops. Um, they used the round mop brushes, and I just never tried that because I like cutting in around sharp things. And you'll see this if I'm not talking too long. Let's see if I can get. Okay, I'm going to try this again up here too, so we'll see what. I told Tanya she better pray for me, so I think this is going to work out just fine. It's <laughs> I think it's working. <laughs> I'm going to try and pull this down into a foggy. Could you tear a couple of those off for me? Thank you. Didn't want wanted the violet, not the. You see what a little bit of this brown will do. Knock it down a little bit. Okay, let's see if I take all the water out of it. Here. Okay, I'm going to stop and dry this because I can see some background here coming up pretty quick. So I need to hold it up. And if you're paint, painting, depending if you're doing abstract, man, you can turn your 
how, you, you can turn your paper just about any direction and let it run different directions and, and keep you know putting paint in there like that. But if you want to control it, um, that's getting a fairly decent um, hard edge, but but it kind of looks like a tree line at the top, and that's kind of what I was go going for. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to take this. That, that's what I want. This is this cheap tissue is not working. Um, I these are the my Mary uh, blue, and I'm not using them anymore. So, so but I am still because I'm not going to throw them away, you know. So until these are gone, um, and I didn't bring a list with me, but um, you can, I can rattle them off here, but um, if you wanted to come up and, you can come up and take a photograph of the palette, and I've got all of the colors uh, labeled around the edge of the palette. Um, I've got, and I, I'm a fan of uh, Sterling Edwards as well, and because he was a fan. Originally, I started painting and was buying books, and of course, I've got a library now of how-to books, and Zoltan Zeba was one of my favorites. And I loved him, and I thought, I've got to take one of his classes. And um, I was able to. He, he came to Brown County one time, he, um, and... Uh, I'm going to leave that alone. Like I said, I was going to. Um, so I took a class, uh, workshop with him down in Brown County and just fell in love with his style. It was so free and... And, um, and I found out later, he passed away. Um, and there's a whole story behind him and where he come from, came from um, Hungary and, and uh, Germany was invading and he made it out alive and went to Canada and eventually came down into the United States. And uh, Sterling Edwards took more classes from him than I was able to. And I saw Sterling's work and I thought, I got to talk to him talked to him, so I looked him up, and my friend Luke, Buck, who I took classes from forever, knew Sterling, his wife, and so just kind of a serendipity type thing where I got to meet different people at different time, or at the right time, I think, and uh, I, I loved that style, and it was free, and um, Sterling would always talk about um, he used to be a police officer, and he said he didn't have time to paint. And um, he said, I, I was a, what do you call him, a photorealist. And he says, I'd work three or four months on one piece, but when I got done with it, I didn't want to, I didn't want, I don't like this hobby, you know? <laughs> and so he didn't want to paint anymore. He, so he took lessons from Zoltan and and he came up with his own book, uh, Sterling did, and it's all about keep it simple, you know, three or four different washes, uh, save your whites, and then put in your lightest washes, and then your med uh, middle to medium values, and then at the very end, you go in and put your dark in, and it, it just pulls it together. Kind of like putting a, a mat and a frame on a painting, it makes it that much better when you, it just kind of finishes it off. Okay, I'm going to have to get them. That's not going to run anymore. So I'll try not to talk over that, but you can come up and look at it if you want. I'm going to see if I can get, is there, she said there's a water fountain close. Oh, 
water fountain. Is that out this door? So, I, I just need a drink. I'm parched, and I didn't bring my water bottle in. I'll tell you what, if I go too far, I'll turn this off, won't I? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And it's tough to try and get a soft edge. Uh, you want really do want to get a a mixture, a variation of soft and hard edge. And if you can get the dry brush and some wet in there, and it just kind of it, that pulls your eye to the center of the, as well as this one. And the next, then the focal point is going to be. Am I still? Yeah. Focal point's going to be down here, and then when I get the base in at the bottom, then look what happens when you get dark, the dark uh, brush line in there, and a little bit of detail, and that's all you, that's all you really need. How'd I do that? This is my white area. Was this is going to be dark? This is going to be dark anyway. I got paint on the back of this somehow and laid it. Okay, let's see if I can continue here. So I have a little bit of blue, and I'm going with a uh, different, different brush here. Let me see which one. And that's where I had my other little palette here that was doing this piece earlier and so I wanted I was working on some yellows and I said I'm not throwing that away and these are nice little trays when you run out of space on your palette and you don't want to clean it off because I'm going to continue using that mess and um, although although I'm, I'm, I've got to mix up that blue again so here we go I'm going to Clean off a small part of this. I'm going to get, I'm going to get in trouble here, Bill. No, I still live in Muncie, and um, yeah, after I retire, we're, um, I've got a brother that I worked with at Pause at the Garfield Studio, and he's still there, and um, we're thinking about moving, but haven't yet, so. Not sure when or where. Pardon? Box fires? Yeah. 
I never went there on my own unless he was throwing a party. And then I went, you know. <laughs> he was paying for it. So, but yeah, I was there from November of, you see, it was, the strip was syndicated in, in uh, 78, 19, Eight, so 83, I moved to Muncie and then uh, retired 2017 in, in February, so. Might as well, I've got this large area down here, I might as well. Might as well fill that in. So I mix up more of this mixture because I'm going to go darker with it here in the in the foreground. So really, I've used three colors pretty much the whole. I went from the light blue, added to it for the uh, next ridge, and then added violet to it. And the foreground is going to be similar, and it's basically just a shadow area. And this keeps the fewer the fewer colors you use, I believe, um, keeps the piece a little bit more harmonious and not. I mean, it'd be easy to get too many different colors in there, and then you don't the eye doesn't know where to go. So, let's see what have I got here? This is my dark dark. Here we go. I don't know. The first piece that I got um, juried into the ju or accepted into the juried show was 2019, and I almost brought that and that piece sold the day of, uh, before the show opened. I mean, it had to stay on the wall, but um, but I had already had that one. Um, set up for limited editions before I went into the show. And I've sold a few prints, and I was going to bring one. Um, remind me later, and I can pull it up on my iPad here. It was a, it was a really nice sunset. And um, let me see here. It was such a fun piece to do, but it was one of those things that it was really simple looking, but you really had to stop and figure out how you were going to mix the paints and which ones you were going to put where. Um, and and then you're constantly testing to see, I'll even do it, you know, even take one of these and just do a gradation of a blue down into an orange and how do you do that? You know, I was told, you know, in order to keep it from getting muddy, that um, Sterling told me this. He said, you put something that blends with the blue and that blends with the orange or the yellow. And that would be a, uh, a neutral red, a cool red. And you put, you put that in the center. And of course, this is all, it's not thick paint. It's loose and uh, so it went from a blue sky, and it automatically then went into a violet, and into an orange, and into a yellow for the sunset. So I'll pull, I'll pull that up. Pardon? Twenty thirteen. Really? Oh wow! I did not know that. Yeah. How many numbers are there? We ended last year with two hundred sixty-five. I hope I signed up again. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm gonna. I can't see the water.
So. I'm going to hit a little bit of that orange here and see what that does. That's a little much, and it got too much paint to gray. Yeah. We'll back off of that. I want the violet more. And then I always want to, uh, I'm going to switch it out here. You always want to leave. leave an area for <clears throat> your signature. If you get it too dark, then you're going to have to go in with an opaque. <laughs> so I will dry this as well. Clean up that water so it doesn't bleed back in. <clears throat> so by the time you get all of your <clears throat> washes, in that takes the fear out of a piece of blank white paper and that's um that's light medium and i'm getting towards the dark but my dark darks are going to be the the foliage and the fence line right in here that plastic doesn't help does it does it is it? Yeah. So it it almost looks it almost looks like it's done when you when you get this much done. Then the, once you get the detail in there, that kind of pulls it all together. <clears throat> and I do have a little bit of brown in here, which I did want to do. And I don't want to add water to that. I'll come in from the other angle a little bit. Okay, turn this guy over. So I really am trying to look at the next place that's dry to see if I can I get too wild sometimes when I'm trying to do put some paint in on it and it invariably I'll get spatter marks and I did that up here in the sky but if you're creative enough you can put a bird in there and <laughs> cover it up. <clears throat> I do have a yellow streak in there that I want to get, so.
Okay, what was it? I'm going to try and lighten, lighten it up a little bit so that I'm not getting <clears throat> too heavy with that. It's just, this is supposed to be a white area as well as the fog here and the top of the barns. So the yellow I'm trying to mix up here should be fairly light and You know, whenever I see that dry brush, then it's then I have to load it again because I already got the dry brush there. It didn't do it at all. Okay, I'm going to dry this again too. So if you have any questions, <clears throat> I'll be right over here. It pretty much has to be bone dry before you go back in <coughs> into it and do any more detail. <coughs> and you can feel with the back of your hand if it's still got a raise in the paper, or if it feels cool, it's not totally dry. <coughs> One of the hardest lessons I had to learn was with watercolor was not how you prepare your palette. Get your all your your some of your paints mixed up ahead of time, and then have your test paper on the side. But to get in and get out with the largest brush, paint with the largest brush possible for as long as you can. Because I used to get in there with a small brush and start noodling and doing things like oh, no, I didn't get the background in it. You can't go over it once you've got your detail in. <clears throat> and it's better to have too much white than not enough. You can always, at the end of the piece, you can always do a quick glaze to knock, um, knock some of that white down if, that, if, if that's not your focal point or your point of interest. That's flat. <clears throat> okay, it's chair time. Um, I, I try and take my own reference photos. Um, I've had friends that said you can use, you know, you can use this, and 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 I will do that if I get their permission. But I used to paint from. I mean, when you're learning, that's why you get how-to books. You paint from them. You just can't sell them or put them in a show uh, because of copyright infringement. Um, so, 
and are you and and same thing with uh, photo, other people's photographs and um, magazine or you know pictures from magazines or calendars. You can take bits and pieces from them, but I tend to see something I like and try and paint that thing that I see. Um, and it also helps to you know have a sketchbook and <clears throat> I do small pencil sketches that this one goes with this piece so you're not spending a lot of time on a great big you know trying to get values you can get values in as much detail as you want on a smaller scale and then that tells you oh and I was going to bring a piece that showed <clears throat> if you ever take um, pictures of your painting you have an iPhone, if you have an I, I have an iPhone then I take it in I take it into edit and take it into I forget what mode you can go to mono or and and, and silver tone and different you know, yeah mono is the one because it sh shows you what this looks like in black and white and all the shading and if your values are correct, you know your painting is right on. And that's how you, well, you've heard people say, you know, squint at your artwork. And um, it not only simplifies, but it kind of grays everything down so you can see where your values are. What did I do with? Oh, here it is. Also, if I don't. Have, I don't know if I've got enough for everybody, but if they want one of those, just as a reference to, um, just pass those out. And this one can go to. This is a uh, black and white of one that I took earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to go just a little bit darker here with some ochre. And maybe a little bit. I said I didn't want to do this one and see what it what it does. Okay. Well, I think I'll doodle here a little bit with the uh, get this red barn in here. I was notorious for every barn had to be red. I don't know why, but I try and. Uh, Mute the colors a little bit more and not paint everything. But this is so tiny that this will be um, pretty much the focal point, hopefully. And um, I don't want it really bright or r real noticeable. So I'm going to brown. Now that's a little bit too. Okay, I had some smaller brushes somewhere. This is it. Oh, 
So we're just going to go on to the uh, base. Just kind of pull down and get a rough edge on the bottom. We need a little bit more color on this one. Sometimes, all those years of calligraphy work and inking the Garfield comic strip comes in handy. But this is a whole lot more fun. And then the sides are going to be a little bit less. Pull some of this violin in here. <laughs> um, I can finish this at any time. Because I've got this piece and another one framed, I can finish this later. Um, sure. See what I can do. What I'm doing if I'm holding that paper. Right? You put that little uh, barn behind the other one just by putting a little bit of uh, blue on the top at the edge and a little bit of a crease in this roof there. The rest of that's going to stay white. My own worst enemy. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to need to mix a dark green here. I was running out of a permanent green deep. I thought, man, I've got two other colors here, and there's too many blues, and I, I really didn't like 
this palette as much. So I'll try this, what they call Kubrick green, and it's really a bold blue green, almost a, um, what do I want to say? Something you see in a crashing wave, you know, clear water. And um, so I started mixing that with a couple of these, and I was getting some of these muted. I do. I use. I do use this one at home, but I was trying to switch over, and I was not getting rid of these quick enough. And I, so I bought another palette smaller to do some plain air painting, and um, I just like these big wells. I mean, you can get a, you can get a huge brush, in in these wells. I could get a, a two inch brush in that well. Um, so I I got two different brands that I use now. <clears throat> A little violet to that gets it dark. Oop, messing up my. Okay, I don't have my pencil on me, so I'm just going to go ahead and wing it here. They do. Thank you, pencil girl. So once once your yeah painting is dry, and if you paint over it, it's better, I guess, to have it too light. Because um, I'll answer another question you had. I have transferred drawings before, depending on how complicated they are. And I've used the Sorel with the transfer paper, and I've also used uh, graphite on the back of my sketch paper and smear it with alcohol to blend it. And I found myself, and then you use, you have to, if you're going to use it again and again, I used a like a red ballpoint pen. I caught myself pressing too hard to get that image on there, and I just really wanted a light pencil line. And so you get into the problem of you've got an indentation now in your paper, and it makes it harder. The harder you push, the harder it is to erase. And um, so I'm, yeah, I'm happy with with this. So let me get my. That's too big of a brush. So this is a. Uh, I didn't finish what I was doing. See if I can, how quickly I can stumble. This is where, if I'm not careful, I'm going to get I'm going to get spatter when you're doing a scumble with the dry brush. The, your bristles will skip around. You're trying to get something fairly loose that gives you the effect of leaves without painting leaves. I'm covering up.
No, it's it's completely dry. Otherwise, I couldn't get these hard edges and, and the dry brush effect here at the bottom. And here, I got to be careful because I'm going around these barns and. I'm going to have a little break here. And you don't want to run out of paint because you don't want to have to mix. Now, I know uh, at this point, you know, variation is always important, but I'm in a roll here and I'm trying to get this done. So I'm going to use the same color all the way across. But if I was thinking quicker, I would be adding some um, siennas and stuff to break up this green. No, same. Keep my hand out of it here, but I'll do a few. Pine trees and they can go down right into and that can be my, my variation. And I would just kind of bleed this down like it's in the fog. That's what I do, drag my finger across here. Okay, it's part of the painting now. Okay, I'm going to get some darks. on this fence row, I'll use a dirty water. I'm going to take the uh, the small round. It's a number eight round, and I'm going to do a sideways, kind of a jagged brush stroke across the bottom of this and throw, maybe. You just tap it a little bit, maybe too. That'll break it up. I'll leave it a little bit open here because I've got, I'll throw some tire tracks in there like somebody's been back there before.
go ahead and continue this, and I've got some uh, uh, fence posts here that I'll uh, put different spacings, keep your hand out of it, different angles, just some little bit of calligraphy there. And now look for my uh, rigger. I never knew about these for the longest time. I was afraid to use them. <clears throat> but if you're doing any type of light calligraphy, they're really nice. And I'm going to add a little bit, of, darken that a little bit with blue. He paints gray. Now, when I'm going back into some trees over here, And that tree goes right up through that little white area. And we're here. And I forgot to get, let me see if I can do it with this one, <laughs> the uh, little doorway on the bottom. Just a little flip. I'm going to... Over here and get something for the shadow under the I think I'm getting pretty close to being done. I'm going to put some bigger brush. What have I got here? Nope. I don't want the green. For sure, I will eventually go back in and do a few more touch-ups here, but...
I'm just going to connect some of these. Uh, Senses. Not too much detail, but see, kind of fine. You almost get a razor, um, razor point with with the uh, rigger brush. I've got some more down in here I could do later or maybe darken a little bit, but I'll finish. I'll say we're done here. So. <clears throat> the views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250.